Hello, 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 everyone. I hope all of you are doing great. Welcome to this exciting day one of the Game Changer webinar for the March 2024 attempt. So can I have some confirmation? Am I absolutely crystal clear, specifically with respect to voice clarity? Okay, thank you very much, Parveen. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so let's roll then. Okay, so... Uh, Today is 15th February 2024, and I don't know why, but the exam is on Thursday, 7th March 2024, which means you have got, well, an extra Monday, an extra Tuesday, and an, and an extra Wednesday, followed by the exam day that is going to be on Thursday. Because I attempted my double A back in December 2010. And I've never experienced that double A or triple A is, you know, they, this has always been constant. The, both the double A and the triple A, they've always been on the Mondays. But I don't know why, maybe fortunately for you, you might not have to face the Monday blues. So you've got three extra days. Well, that's a great news. And uh, this is a leap year. So we have got 29th of February as well. So you have got one extra day. So maybe fortune favors the brave. So if that is the case, well, I believe you need to feel optimistic about things. You need to be really pumped up and you need to make sure you will ace the paper. Now, considering the fact you have got more than two weeks, or let's call it two weeks, is it still doable? Well, I said it early in the morning today, and I'm saying it all over again with all the confidence and with all the honesty, that if you are going to be honest with yourself from tonight onwards, mark my words, you will be able to crack this paper. And if you are going to be extremely honest and dedicated with double A, with yourself, well, there is a huge possibility that you will shine like a bright star on Thursday, 7th March. Well, why Thursday, 7th March? Well, because there are, generally speaking, two types of students. And even on Thursday, 7th March, when the exam will be over, so, you know, somewhere in the parking lot, there will be two types of students. A, who are just going to attempt the paper. And they are going to hope against the hope that they will make it. And greater majority of those will not be able to pass the paper. But there is another category, the second category of students who are not only going to attempt the paper, well, I believe they are going to secure the paper. And those students who are going to secure the paper, they have to be disciplined for the next 15 days. And you can be the one. So let's create a cut off right now. I'm sure all of you must be familiar with a phrase and with a terminology called cut off, which is a very common phrase and a very common terminology in double A and triple A. So let's create a cut off. Let's start a brand new story now from tonight and we'll make sure with, a, with an effort, with an you know, dedication that you can and you will crack this paper on Thursday, 7th March, 2024. Yes, there are few prerequisites for that. And I'll be sharing those prerequisites. And I'm dead sure, I'm super sure. I I use this, I, well, I normally say, been there, done that. So I have, you know, experienced a lot of positive results for those or out of those who have followed the instructions and who remained honest and dedicated with their studies. So it's your future, not mine. It's your bread and butter at stake. So you got to be extremely disciplined and extremely honest with your study. Let's start the show. Well, my name is Emmer, and you've got two very important numbers in front of you. The first number belongs to me. So you're more than welcome to contact me if you've got any hesitation or any reservation regarding double A, or triple A. Moreover, the second number belongs to Vivi, so you can contact them if you wish to enroll. Well, what are you going to enroll for? 
considering the exam is around the corner, well, you can still ignore for the double A crash batch, also known as the revision batch. The crash batch and, and or the revision batch has got limited content, but it has got the mock exam. It covers pretty much all the important stuff. And yeah, it's a great value for money. Okay, let's quickly continue before I will tell you my agenda for the day. Okay, so yeah, I am teaching double A and triple A in both the languages at Wiki. Wiki is a gold online ALP. So yeah, it's registered, it's authorized, it's acknowledged by the ACCA itself. And I have been honored and privileged to be part of the ACCA's official practice to pass webinars, not only for double A, but for triple A as well. Okay, let's, let's be a bit quick. What about pass rates of double A? Well, the pass rates of double A are pretty pathetic when it comes to the skill level papers, or especially if you compare it with tax, which is 54, 56%. If you compare it with FM or FR, which are more than 50% or at least 50%. So the pass rate of AA is not promising. It's, um, well, I would say on an average, it's 40, 41%. Why is it so? Well, well, I'll tell you the reason, but before that, well, if you want to crack this paper, if you want to pass this paper, surely you are going to give respect to the three major areas, auditors, internal controls, and substantive procedures. But along with that, you've got to make sure you actually pay respect to the minor topics as well, such as ethics, such as corporate governance, and internal audit. And last, but surely not the least, completion, review, and reporting. So these are your con course content. Make sure you prepare each and every topic. Do not even imagine of ignoring a particular topic. Normally, students do not ignore any major topic, but students tend to ignore a particular minor topic, such as ethics, such as corporate governance. Don't commit that mistake. Well, the exam format is pretty challenging one for the double A, especially as compared to PM, FR, FM, or tax, any skill level paper. Well, unlike those papers, there are two sections only. The first section will have three OT case questions. Each and every OT case will have five questions. The burning question is from where I'm going to get a section A question. Well, any area of the syllabus could be tested when it comes to section A. What about section D? Well, in the section B, there are there, well, there will be three PRQs, and those three PRQs will mainly focus the three major topics, and those are risk, control, and procedure, especially substantive procedure. But having said that, the section B, which is for 70 mark, will have at least 15 to 20 marks out of the minor topic. So you have to understand and you have to realize the importance of minor topics. Well, if you're familiar with this, that why students fail this paper, maybe it's a great time to recall all those things quickly so that we could go to the main topic. Well, why students fail at AA? Well, let's, let's evaluate. Are you committing any of the mistake? Why students fail in AA? If your typing speed is poor, you will not be able to complete the paper. Even if you were able to complete that, even if you were able to complete FR, you will not be able to complete double A. So you need to work on your typing speed. Well, how are you going to work on your typing speed? Well, make sure on a daily basis, at least, at least, at least, you need to type for three to four hours at least. So you need to make sure you are not just reading the questions and answers, you are actually typing those questions and use the ACCA practice platform in order to address this issue. Your familiarity with the practice platform will improve and so as your typing speed. Another, well, one of the most common reason behind the double A failure is students tend to score 10, 12, or hardly 14 marks in their section A. Well, how can you improve your section A? Well, first of all, you got to solve all the section A questions from your exam kit. Once you are done with the exam kit, Please solve the section A questions using the ACCA Study Hub. 
if you are going to solve the section A questions from the study hub after your exam kit section A questions, mark my word, you will score 24, you might score 26, and you can you can score 28 or 30 in your section A. So the study hub content for the section A is so important that to be very honest, I don't have enough words to make you realize the importance of the section A questions on the study hub. And approximately there are 32 OT case questions available in your ACCA study hub. So is it doable? Yes, indeed. Well, you can solve three ACCA study hub questions on a daily basis. And if you are going to do so, you can finish off all the ACCA study hub questions in 11 days time. So it's not going to be a great deal. Okay. Now, another important reason behind the double A failure is students do not prepare the bookish knowledge and they do not score anything in the straightforward bookish knowledge area. Now, how are you going to prepare straightforward bookish knowledge? Well, I'll tell you a secret. I'll share a few notes in relation to the straightforward bookish knowledge and you will be able to quickly prepare those things because now, well, normally I say prepare your own straightforward bookish knowledge notes. Now, considering the fact we only have got 15 days left in the final exam, so we are not going to make the notes. Well, get that ready-made notes. Somebody will share it in the WhatsApp group. My, maybe my some of my regular students, maybe Hamak can share it, maybe Babar can share it. Anyone, maybe Tanish can share it. So guys, gear up. You need to share the straightforward bookish knowledge note, which I made you understand how to prepare. Well, I remember it was from Magpie to Recorder and then from Tali to Peer International. Am I right or am I wrong? Am I right or am I wrong with the names? Okay, yes. So I think I'm right. Thank you very much. So, so this is your fourth area which you need to cover in order to pass the paper. What about the fifth? What about the fifth reason? Well, exam technique is extremely important when it comes to three major topics. And we will be covering one of the major, one of the major area tonight. I'll be covering another major area tomorrow. And I might not be able to cover the third major area within these two days. But surely that third area will be covered through your crash course if you are part of the crash course. So you don't have to worry. Okay, what about, uh, well, minor areas? Do not ignore minor areas. I'll tell you a few important questions tonight. And with the help of those important questions, your minor areas would be prepared as well. Last, but surely not the least, do not ignore the final mock exam. When it comes to double A, your tutor will evaluate 70 mark paper. And it's all theory. And it's all subjective. And it, it's all, it, it all requires some expertise, some experience to mark the mock exam. So you need someone, some expert tutor, anyone, let it be me or anyone else. But you need to make sure your mock exam is marked by an expert tutor. Maybe the importance or of the marking, you know, the importance in relation to marking the mock exam is not that high when it comes to, for example, tax paper. Because out of 100, a 60 mark paper is self-marked through the software. Out of the remaining 40, approximately 30 to 35 mark paper is numerical. So you can self-mark your mock exam. But when it comes to double A for 70 marks, when it comes to triple A for, for 100 marks, these are discussion-based paper. And you need someone who understands the marking scheme. And you need someone who can understand or who can read your shocking pink English. So you need someone who could read your answer and who could let you know where you have made certain mistakes. So the mock exam is extremely important across all ACC exams. But I think the importance of the mock exam is multiplied by two or three. And I don't know what when it comes to a discussion based paper such as double A AA or triple A. OK, forget about my plan. 
forget about the critical success factor, forget about the difference between the English batch and the Hindi Urdu batch. Uh, oh, okay, one of my favorite part. So, do you wish to pass double A? The answer is, let's not waste time. The answer is yes, yes, yes. Now, if you wish to crack this paper on Thursday, 7th March, well, there is a very straightforward and a very simple recipe. And the recipe is, if you are preparing a major topic, such as audit risk, which, which we will grasp tonight, you've got to make sure you prepare. It's if, if it is a major topic, such as audit risk, or if it is a minor topic, such as ethics. If it is a major topic, internal control system, or if it is a minor topic such as corporate governance, make sure you prepare each and every topic from three different perspectives. What does that mean? Three different perspectives. What does that mean? Now, what do I mean by prepare each and every topic from three different perspectives? So if you are going to follow this tip, and if you are going to religiously apply this approach for each and every double A topic, I can promise you, I can bet my life on it, and I can give you an absolute assurance, though it is not allowed in double A, chapter number one. Absolute assurance is not allowed in our profession when it comes to the audit. But I can assure you, I can give you all the guarantees if you are going to prepare each and every topic from three different perspectives, you will shine and you will be the one who is going to secure the paper on Thursday, 7th March, rather than just attempting it. Now, what do I mean by three perspectives? Three perspectives mean, so let's talk about audit risk. So if I have to prepare audit risk, well, I will prepare the application-based questions. No doubt about it. But at the same time, I will make sure I do prepare the straightforward bookish knowledge relevant to the, to, relevant to the audit risk. But I'm not done as yet. I will make sure I will solve the OT case questions, the section A questions, not only from the exam kit, but more importantly, more difficult level, more painful questions, the ACCA study hub section A questions as well. So if you are preparing a minor topic such as ethics, okay, go on to prepare it with the help of application-based questions such as Orange Financial, such as Harleen. But at the same time, prepare the bookish knowledge relevant to ethics as well, such as the definition of five fundamental principles, how to manage the conflict of interest, what is engagement letter. So these are the minor topics relevant to ethics. Now, once you are done with the application side, once you are done with the straightforward bookish knowledge, you must prepare the section A questions as well. Ethics is a hot cake when it comes to the double A paper, especially in, with respect to section A. Is this clear? Are we clear what is or what do I mean by the three perspectives? So we need to prepare each and every topic with respect to the application side as well, with respect to the bookish knowledge as well, with respect to the uh, section A questions as well. So if that is the case, that's great. Yeah, that's great, Fatma. Bookish, long questions and OTKs, well done. Yes, these are the three perspectives. Well done. Okay, so let's move to the... Okay, give me a minute, please. Let's discuss something very important, which I created a couple of days ago. And I think I shared this file and I had a discussion regarding the same in my live classes as well. So these are the top 20 questions for double A for the March 2024 attempt. Now, why these 20 questions are so important? Because intentionally, with all my brain, 
and with all the dedication i intentionally incorporated each and every possible topic within these 20 questions so these are not ordinary top 20 questions these are very special top 20 questions and to begin with there are questions which are not exactly exam style questions but the first and the second question will ensure you are done with ethics and corporate governance the two minor topics then you will move towards the auditory and the question number 3 4 5 6 7 7 from magpie to peach these seven questions are relevant to auditory but guess what within these questions for example there is a question called hurling within hurling not only you will face auditory but again you have to encounter ethics as well then from 8 dali to question number 14 these questions are relevant to internal control from dali to chamomile these questions are relevant to internal control but for example in freesia there is a question called freesia not only you will face internal controls but you will also face corporate governance which you dealt earlier as well in a question called in a question called Exophone Enterprises. So, see, intentionally, I have made sure that these questions will cover pretty much everything. What about raspberry? Well, raspberry, along with blackberry, along with gooseberry, these are my favorite berries. But on top of that, I love strawberry. Now, what about what about raspberry? Well, not only the raspberry question will focus on the control systems, but it has a flavor of internal audit as well. Okay, now the next question from Pacific to the New to Pineapple Beach to Gooseberry. These questions will focus on substantive procedures. Paid fish and hasting. These questions will primarily focus again the substantive procedures, but along with that, they have got flavors of going concern and subsequent events. What about impact on audit report? Well, I'm sure Pacific, the New. and gooseberry they do have the flavor of audit report so did i miss anything is there anyone who is already done with the syllabus and is there anyone who knows every bit of the syllabus did i miss any topic any minor or any major topic broadly speaking and the answer is no not really so these 20 questions will ensure that you will be able to cover each and every syllabus area now i need 2 3 more minutes before i proceed so what what's your plan today is 15th plan number 1 invest the next 5 days 5 4 the 20 invest the next 5 days and prepare these 20 questions and then you need to get holidays or vacations for the next 10 days and then come back on 6 march and Sleep overnight and then go on and attempt the paper on seven March and you will shine and you will crack you will be able to crack the paper not really you are not only going to rely on these twenty questions but on top of that once you are done with these top twenty questions please along with these top twenty questions and more importantly once you are done with these top twenty questions please for God's sake focus on section A questions. please try to figure out someone who has failed double a paper and scored 20 or more in section a is there anyone among your peers among your friends among your classmates among your seniors who has failed double a but not only he or she failed the paper he or she scored 20 or more in section a the answer would be no oh tanish is brave enough to come up with such a comment in the chat box and he is saying i scored 16 in section a last time and he failed the paper by 3 marks okay tanish let's continue this conversation i i am dead sure i'm super dead sure that you are going to be honest now Oh, okay, Janvi 
is saying I scored 16 and I failed at 49. Okay. Okay. Janvi and Zubair is saying I score only 10 in section A and left 14 mark cannot complete. Okay. Sufyan came up with a direct message, not a public one. Failed the paper at 49 and the section A score was 12. Anyone else who's brave enough to create an inspirational story, you know, your, your, if you're going to reveal your story, maybe someone might realize it. It could be an eye opener for others. Maybe others could learn from your mistake and what goes around comes around. Maybe somewhere down the line, you'll be able to learn from the mistakes of the others. So I, we have got Tanish, Janvi, Zubair, Sufyan. Okay, Fatma, I failed the paper at 44 and scored 16 in Section A. Khalid Aziz, with a direct message, Section A 16, failed by 4 marks. Varisha scored 16 marks and failed the paper at 47. Okay, enough, I guess. What's the learning outcome? What's the learning outcome? Danvi, I know what's the solution. Jimsy, once I give you that, you will not be. I left everything out there. Just for now. Yes, I totally agree with you, Shelly. Okay. Okay, so those who, first of all, listen to me, even if I do not teach anything tonight, even if after five minutes, let's end this meeting, no problem, if you could understand what I'm saying right now. This is the biggest takeaway of this session. No, no, it is, no, it, it will not affect, don't worry. You need to create a balance. Are you a full-time student? Are you a full-time student? Okay, can you guys help me out with something? Those who are working along with the studies, just post a comment in the chat box, right? Working. I want to know how many of you are working? Working. I just want I just want you to come up with a comment working if you are not a full-time student. If you are not a full-time student. You know what, guys? Those who are working. I love you because I hate full-time students. Full-time students are a burden on economy. They are a burden on parents. They are a burden on their potential family as well. They are a burden on everyone. So those who are not working at the moment, on Thursday night, once you are done your, with your double A exam, you got to make sure you come up with your CV. Thursday night, you have to make a CV. On Friday and Saturday, Sunday, right after your uh, double A exam, you know, circulate and spread your CV and try to get some training opportunity for yourself. So, okay, in my part of the world, full time students are all over the place and they are a curse and they are a burden on pretty much everyone. Okay, Ahmedullah, that's great. Okay, so let's continue. So those who have, those who were brave enough and they made me realize that they scored 16, 18, 14, 12 and uh, they were not able to pass the paper. Guys, I need to answer, uh, you guys need to answer one more question. Did you solve section A questions using both kids along with ACCA study hub and then ended up scoring 10, 12, 14, 16 marks and ended up filling the paper? Okay, now we have to concentrate on the chat box all over again because Kushbu is saying not yet fully. And Tanish is saying took it for granted. This is this is the most obvious and the most honest answer. Took it for granted. I don't know why students will perceive that if they are going to prepare section B, their section A would be automatically prepared. That's what students wrongly believe. It's a it's an expectation gap. Again, chapter number one of AA, expectation gap. 
if you are going to solve not only the exam kits for section A, along with that, listen to me, if you are going to solve all the section A questions from the ACCA study hub, you will score at least 24 out of 30 in your final exam. At least you can and you might and you will score more than 24, but at least 24, but at least 24. Oh, oh, thank you very much for your valuable input, Kavesh. Thank you very much. Yes, there is a thing called exam, my exam performance report. Yes, that's really important. You will be able to raise, you will be able to figure it out how much you scored in section A, how much you scored in section B, how how was your performance in audit risk, how was your performance in control. You will be able to figure it out, figure out everything. Can we do direct study up? No, Khushbu. If you are going to jump directly towards the ACCA study up section A questions, you will face a lot of difficulty because those questions are very difficult. But mind you, those are difficult, but at the same time, they are very much realistic and aligned with the ACCA paper. So don't directly jump towards the study up questions. Maybe three questions from the exam kit early in the morning, maybe three questions relevant to the same topic, maybe from the study up in the evening. Just, you know, you could, you could do both in parallel, something like that. Okay, Vamshi, that's great. Sir, there are some OTQs in examiner report for practice. Yes, okay, Ahmed Abdullah, listen to me. Well, maybe I've already shared, otherwise I will share a very important file uh, with you tomorrow. I asked Mev Mavish yesterday, probably she did it. There is a file called selective questions. All those section A questions which are available in the examiner report, over a dozen examiner reports will be there in your WhatsApp group. So I call that file, I call that file, uh, what's the name of that file? Uh, selective double A questions. Okay, okay. If, he, if she has already shared it, great. Otherwise, I'll share it tomorrow or maybe right after the class in your relevant WhatsApp groups. It's called selective double A questions. Those are not CRQs. Those are not section B questions. Those are section A questions. Those section A questions are important, but trust me, nothing is more critical and more important as compared to the ACCA study hub questions. Uh, yes, Swamchi, don't you worry. I will share it. Don't worry. I will share it. Okay. Okay, back to the extremely important instructions. I need to move on. What about extremely important instructions? Once you are done with those 20 questions, once we have covered your entire lectures, which are available with Wi-Fi, you need to focus on the section A questions. Once you are done with the section A questions, then what? Well, you got to move, once you are done with the lectures, once you have prepared everything, you need to move towards the ACCS practice platform. And there are past papers available there, over there. And you need to pr pr practice those papers. You need to focus on the ACCS practice platform. What about the mock exam? Well, today is 15th. Your mock exam is on 21st. You will not be able to attempt the mock exam irrespective of the fact that how good or how bad your exam preparation is. So let's assume your exam preparation is good. Let's assume you have covered all my lectures. Let's assume you are done with all one dozen plus questions on audit risk, one dozen plus questions on controls, and one dozen plus questions on substantive procedures. You have covered each and every lecture on minor topic. You have covered section A questions. So you, are, you have prepared everything. You, you, you used to submit the assignment. You used to send the questions in the WhatsApp group. You are a star. You are a star. Still, you will not be able to attempt the full mock exam. You will not be able to fight during the exam. Well, mock exam. Why, why, why? You will be tired and fatigued, not only mentally, but physically as well. You will not be able to concentrate for a straight three-hour period. So what's the solution? Well, the solution is, your final mock exam with Wifi, with me, is on 21st, maybe on 19th and 20th. 
okay baby let's have a gap on 20th maybe on 18th and 19th you got to attempt mock exam and if you are going to attempt mock exam on 18th and 19th you will struggle you have to fight there will be a you know negative vibes will be all around you you might have a feeling let's let let's start with a brand new mock tomorrow what well, maybe maybe you will give up after writing four audit risk maybe you will not be able to complete the paper maybe you will be drained mentally and physically but all that pain all that fatigue and all that negativity will ensure one thing that as a student you will learn a lot about your physical and mental strength and all that will ensure that you will attempt the complete mock exam on 21st february 2024 and once you will attempt the full mock exam the onus the liability the burden the responsibility will be on me to critically evaluate each and every line each and every paragraph and each and each and every sentence and with this mutual effort your mark your mark your final score will at least enjoy a push in a jump of 10 to 15 mark mark my words but that will only happen if you have actually attempted the full mock exam because you know as a as a as a marker when i if i, I start evaluating a, an exam which is not even half attempted or 60 70% attempted you know there are behavioral issues man i get demoralized so i need you to come up with an absolute fight on 21st and that is only possible if you are going to follow this extremely important instruction is this clear to everyone who is going to attempt the mock exam on 21st is this clear to everyone thank you that's great let's move to the thank you maria thank you everyone okay now i do understand that majority of you have already covered and prepared the first major topic called risk and i do not wish to directly jump towards the past paper question that is why let me quickly remind you what is audit risk audit risk is a risk faced by none other than the auditor an audit firm is always engaged what is the objective of the auditor why do companies and why do members of the company they hire an auditor they want two things the auditor has to gather sufficient appropriate audit evidence and then finally with the conclusion the auditor must express a god damn thing called auditor's opinion so if a cricket batsman will not be able to score runs if a footballer will not be able to score you know in a in a well in a in a very clear from a very clear cut position for example if a swimmer will not be able to swim i think the the underlying or the overriding objective would be failed with a similar logic you as an auditor you have to express opinion over the subject matter called financial statements you have to evaluate the financial statements you have to get a sufficient appropriate audit evidence and you have to conclude whether the subject matter financial statements they are reflecting a true and fair view or not now imagine if your your opinion is incorrect well the risk of expressing an incorrect audit opinion is what we call audit risk is this clear what is audit risk now the question is the burning question is so auditors are so well trained so well experienced so well qualified and competent and competent why the hell we are going to express an incorrect opinion well broadly speaking there are two reasons behind it the first reason is called uh, the risk of material misstatement risk of material misstatement misstatement in what misstatement in what the risk of material misstatement in the financial statements 
So if the risk of material misstatement is vanished, if the risk of material misstatement could be eliminated, well, automatically, why the hell I am going to express an incorrect audit opinion? So if the risk of material misstatement is zero, automatically the audit risk is zero. But risk of material misstatement is never zero. The second component or the second reason behind the audit risk is it's called detection risk. Who's the detective? Auditor. So who's responsible for the detection risk? Auditor. Now, what is detection risk? Detection risk means auditor might not be able to detect the material misstatements in the financial statement. Why? Maybe because of the sampling risk, maybe because of the non-sampling risk. Now, all those definitions from audit risk to risk of material misstatement to detection risk, inherent risk, control risk, sampling risk, non-sampling risk, all these are extremely important for the sake of your bookish knowledge. Is this clear? Again, materiality. What is materiality? What is the importance of materiality? How do we determine materiality? And what are the items which are considered as material by nature? What is the concept of performance materiality? All those items are extremely important for the sake of your bookish knowledge. Examiner could ask you, if you are the external auditor of McDonald's, and you need to understand McDonald's, you need to understand the environment of it, you need to understand the competitive environment, how are you going to gather the information? The question is, as an external auditor, do we need to gather information about the audit client? Yes. The examiner could ask you, how are you going to gather information about your audit client? Again, it's a bookish knowledge. Examiner could ask you, what are the sources of information when it comes to collecting information about your audit client? Another bookish knowledge which the examiner could ask you, what are analytical procedures? When do we apply analytical procedures? And most importantly, examiner could ask you why analytical procedures are applied at the planning stage, why analytical procedures are applied at the final audit stage and why analytical procedures are applied at the completion review stage. So this straightforward bookish knowledge is extremely important. And if you are clear with all this, let me tell you how to prepare the straightforward bookish knowledge in relation to audit risk. So this is your latest triple A, sorry, a latest double A exam kit for the March 2024 attempt. The CRQs, well, the CRQs will start from planning and risk. And the questions will start from December 2022 paper, which is called MACPI. Well, by the way, MACPI is part of my top 20. Okay. Where do they end? Well, they end at Recorder Communication 217. So how many questions do we have? We have got 17 questions. Now, what about straightforward bookish knowledge? Let's go to MACPI. This is MACPI. And this is your part A. Explain the purpose of an audit engagement letter. So as a student, you need to explain the purpose of the audit engagement letter. You are not supposed to write what is audit engagement letter. You are not supposed to tell me who sent the audit engagement letter. Just tell me the purpose of the audit engagement letter. Once you are done with the purpose, once you have explained that it will minimize the potential for misunderstanding, it will set out the terms and conditions. Once you have scored two marks, you need to explain four items. Well, you need to list down four items which should be included in an audit engagement letter, such as the, you know, the, the basis of fee, the deadline, and whatnot. So this part A is what I call straightforward bookish knowledge. Now imagine, imagine if you have scored, imagine if you have scored 24 out of 30 in your section A, and if you could score 12 out of 15 in your straightforward bookish knowledge, what would be your score? 
Imagine you scored 24 out of 30 in section A. And if you could score 12 out of 15 in your straightforward bookish knowledge, well, boy, 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 you have scored 36 out of 45. Now, this the remaining paper would become a piece of cake. It would it would be perceived as a walk in the park because now you need to score another 14 out of 55. That's a that's a walk in the park. That's too easy, I believe. So okay, let's continue with some other questions. ESK. We are, we did this question during this session, right? Okay, what about ESK? Let's go to the part A. Describe the precondition for an audit that the audit firm should have established prior to accepting the audit of ESK company. If I am KPMG and if I have been approached by VP for the sake of external audit, before I accept, before KPMG accept VP for the sake of audit, KPMG will ensure that preconditions for an audit are all there. There are three preconditions, and this part A, my friends, for this part A for four marks is a straight forward bookish knowledge. You need to make sure that client has prepared the financial statement in accordance with the applicable financial reporting framework. They have designed and implemented and established the controls especially over the financial reporting process, then the management has to acknowledge that they will cooperate and provide me with, with the reasonable explanations and, and the evidence. If any of the precondition is not there, I'm not going to accept WIFI as my audit client. So this is what I call straightforward vocational knowledge. Let's continue. Peach. What about Peach? Okay, part A, audit risk. Part B. So if you are an audit firm, and the name of your audit firm is called Apricot. What is your responsibility in relation to prevention of fraud and error and in relation to the detection of fraud and error? Well, you can't really prevent because this is the management's job. But if you are not going to detect the material, well, if you are not going to detect the fraud and error, well, those fraud and errors would eventually lead to material misstatements in the financial statement. So you have to detect fraud specifically because fraud would normally lead to material misstatements in the financial statement. Why you are so bothered about the material misstatement? Because if you are not going to identify a material misstatement in the financial statement, you will face a thing called audit risk because your opinion could be wrong. So what do we call? It's a straightforward bookish knowledge. This peach has got ethics as well. Oh, that is why peach is in my list. Because peach has got, along with audit risk, it has got ethics as well. So you've got ethics in orange financials, and you've got ethics in honey, and you've got ethics in peach. See, I told you, I've created this list with, with a lot of energy and with a lot of concentration to cover pretty much everything. Okay, poorly appliances. Okay, what about quarterly appliances? Describe the preconditions required for an audit. I think we just had a discussion on that. Define the term professional skepticism. It's a, it's a questioning attitude. It's an attitude where you are not going to trust anyone. You are not going to trust unquestioned honesty. You will seek related evidence. You will look for the you know relevant explanation. So, Three plus three, six marks for the straightforward bookish knowledge. What about hard? Okay, let's conclude this. What about hard? Explain the benefits of audit planning. If you are going to plan the audit, you will be able to identify the potential areas of material misstatement in advance. And you can devote, you know, experienced and competent people over there. You will be able to meet the deadlines. You will you'll be able to, you know, they, uh, you'll be able to make sure that the audit is, is overall cost effective. So there are many benefits of audit planning. Again, it's a straightforward bookish knowledge. What about Part D? Well, out of 30 marks, 
जब पार्ट ए वॉज फॉर बुकेश नॉलेज वॉट अबाउट पार्ट डी वॉट अबाउट पार्ट डी ऑल ऑफ यू गॉट वन मिनट टू रीड दिस पोर्शन वेल द पार्ट डी is also a straight forward bookish knowledge from your book chapter number 4 ethics and acceptance and this is the thing called conflict of interest and it's an ethical issue where you have to face two audit clients and those two audit clients are either competitor or they are highly related with each other what safeguards you need to implement in order to manage the conflict of interest appropriately we there are five marks for example i will have two separate engagement teams for two different clients along with two different engagement partners i will make sure my team my audit teams are well trained i will make sure they sign the confidentiality agreement i will make sure they have got physical separation maybe from two different offices so this is a straight forward bookish knowledge guys i hope you have understood what i'm saying you will keep on scrolling and you will keep on getting the straight forward bookish knowledge the story goes on and on and on so what do i want well i want you to create a file from magpie to recorder communication covering all the straight forward bookish knowledge well i know for a fact that majority of you who well, majority of you have already created this file those who were regularly attending the classes and following the instructions so this was the file number 1 which i requested everyone to create what was the file number 2 well the file number 2 has got to do with this portion which i will share tomorrow i'll be discussing the file 2 tomorrow well i know many of you for example babar for example hamad and many of you have already created that beautiful file which incorporates not only not only you guys have created file number 1 but also you guys have prepared and created the file number 2 as well so yes we can share it with others as well otherwise i will share the files which they have made so considering you are left with less time you need to learn it but you know you will only be able to retain all that knowledge if you are going to type the same yes typing will make sure your typing speed will improve your spelling will would improve and most importantly you will be able to retain the knowledge is this clear is it clear can i have confirmation on that if you are if anyone out there who is not my regular with his student and if he or she wants to be part of the group uh, there is a free group as well there is a free group as well how do you join that free group well there are two ways to join the free group number one the most probably the description of the video will have link to this group otherwise for the march 2024 attempt the link of the free whatsapp group well let, i can share the link give me a minute let me share the link in the chat box wait so i have shared the link of the free double a whatsapp group for the march 2024 in the chat box so don't worry you will have the file called selective question you will have a file called the straight forward bookish knowledge from all the audit risk questions tomorrow we'll be discussing the straight forward bookish knowledge relevant to internal controls you will have, i will share the latest exam kit don't worry i will share the top 20 question file along with those extremely important instructions so don't worry don't worry about the resource let's concentrate and let's focus on the final event of the day and you know what what is the final event of the day well the final event of the day is a past paper question on audit risk now before i move to the past paper question let me quickly take you back to the exam requirement what kind of exam question you have to face on your final exam day what questions you need to expect in my final mock exam what question you need to expect 
on the final exam day, that is Thursday, 7th March. Well, the examiner would ask you that you got to use the information. It's not a straightforward bookish knowledge anymore. You've got to use the information available in the question. Maybe you've got to utilize the ratios which you have calculated. So A, maybe you have maybe you have to utilize the ratios which you have calculated. B, using the information available in the question, you have to describe. You have to describe. What do you have? What, what, what to describe? You have to describe audit risk. When I say describe audit risk, it means total one mark. And there is a breakdown of it. If you are going to identify the, the audit risk from the question itself, and if you will be able to highlight which financial statement items are at risk of misstatement, you will score half mark. And when you will explain why you think that the client's accounting treatment is wrong, or why you think that the client's accounting treatment could be wrong, or why you think that the client's accounting treatment could be, you know, it could have mistakes with the explanation of the audit risk. When you are going to express your your apprehension, your doubt, when you are going to criticize the client's accounting treatment, you will score another half mark. So overall, you will be able to score one mark. But the question will always say, the examiner will always say, okay, fine, you have described eight audit risks, but there are total 16 marks. So when you will identify and explain the audit risk, are you going to do something about it? Yes. You must come up with a plan of action. You must respond. You need to take action. You need to create a plan for yourself. You, as an auditor, you just can't simply wait for the risk to unfold itself. You have to come up with something, and that's what we call auditor's response. If you want to fail the paper, think like a management. If you want to pass the paper, if you want to enjoy this particular topic, think like an auditor. What, who's response? Auditor's response. Who's, who's worried? Auditor. An auditor is never worried about the company's profitability. The auditor is never worried about the company reporting losses. Auditor is never worried about the company not being able to achieve the sales they want to. Auditor is worried whether the financial statements are reflecting a true and fair view or not. Let me tell you something which could be extremely, extremely important. And that is from your study text. So this is your latest study text, go on to chapter number five of the new book. This is the latest book, chapter number five, which is about risk. Okay. What about this chapter? Okay. It's not searchable. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. So this is your book, chapter number five called risk. In my lecture, along with a question called Puny, I discussed this. In the live class, in this session, I think I had a discussion on the same. So what about exam focus? What about audit risk question? So guys, audit risk is regularly examined. And it is important to answer the question from the auditor's perspective. If you want to fail the paper, think like a FR student. Think like a tax student. Think like a PM student. No. You have to come up and you have to think like an auditor. You should not be thinking like a client. The auditor is... What, what are we doing? What are we up to? The auditor is trying to detect the material misstatement. Because if there is a material misstatement in the financial statement, that would lead to audit risk. Because I will be expressing an incorrect opinion. The so auditor is not looking to identify risks which affect the profitability of the company. I'm not a business consultant. I just want to make sure that the financial statements are reflecting a true and fair view. A common mistake candidates make in the exam, they explain business risk. If the company's inventory is obsolete, the company will lose the profitability because the company has to write off the inventory. How their future sales would be compromised. 
Why are you so bothered about it? If the company's inventory is obsolete, well, as a result of that, there is a risk that the inventory at the year end could be overstated. Why? Because I have to say inventory must be recognized at a lower of cost NRV. What if the NRV is below the cost? So think about the financial statement being under or overstated. You should not be bothered about the company's profitability. So if a company is operating in, a, in an economic environment where there is economic recession, well, their future sales would be compromised. The company might not be able to survive. The company will lose the future sales. Why you are worried? Think about the uncertainty regarding the going concern. If the disclosure in relation to going concern is not there, that would be considered as a material misstatement. So you need to make sure you are not talking about the business risk. Think about the audit risk. Let's consider one example. If my customer, okay, let's create an example. So my name is KPMV and you are my audit client. One of your major customer, one of your customer, you are my audit client. One of your customer is struggling to pay debt. A poor answer would say, major customer, major receivable, major client, major debtor is struggling to pay the debt. And as a result of that, that debt needs to be written off, which will reduce the company's profitability and the future sales would be lost as well. That's a poor answer. Correct answer would be, that's a poor answer. The correct answer would be, if the customers are struggling to pay debt, there is a risk that the receivable at the year end could be overstated and management might not wish to create an allowance for that. So if the irrecoverable debt are not written off, not charged in the profit or loss account, not written off from the current assets, the receivables would be overstated. So as the profit, this is the correct explanation. There are a couple of more examples, but I need to skip all that. Let's go to the auditor's response. So if the customers are struggling to pay debt, the receivables at the year end could be overstated and the allowance for the doubtful debt could be understated. The profit could be overstated. What could be the irrelevant response, incorrect response? Well, incorrect response could be, incorrect response could be, what if, what if I get the breakdown of the receivables from the client, obtain the receivable listing and cast it to verify mathematical accuracy. Okay. Even if you will be able to cast it, and even if you will be able to verify the arithmetical accuracy, I don't see any benefit, benefit of this activity. Why? Because I don't have doubt over the arithmetical accuracy. As of now, I've got doubt regarding the recoverability of the receivable. So that's an incorrect response. The correct response would have been, I should have obtained the post year end bank statement and cash day book in order to confirm whether the receivable have now converted into cash or not. I should have reviewed the age receivable listing for the, for the old debt. And I should have had a discussion with the management, the need to write off, the need to create an allowance. Is this clear? Can I have confirmation and some input from your side is this clear there are more examples obviously relevant to the same which i am leaving for you for you this is your latest book chapter number five and it's called risk and there is a very important question called murray case study which will be a great question if you want to revise everything relevant to audit risk what's the exam requirement Using the information, provide or describe six auditors along with six auditors' response. This is a question you must attempt by yourself on your own as a test tonight once you are done with this lecture, once you have prepared the question called Magpie. Okay, so I've got you confirmation. Prime is saying yes, understood. Yes, Daniel, you're supposed to write one response only. That's great. Jonita, that's great. That's great. Okay. Time for me to finally move towards the final agenda of the today's session. So hold on to your horses. And here we go.
December 2022 latest paper. And why I am going for this paper? Why I am going towards Magpie? Why I am going for Magpie? A, I would love to visit Pie in the Sky. Secondly, I'm going for Magpie because we believe the following questions ESK, Peach, Corley Appliances, Heart, Starlet, Harlem, Peony, Darjeeling, Blackberry, not Prancer Construction, Harleen, Centipede, Aquamarine, Venus, Sycamore. I'm not sure about reporter communication, but I guess, yes, these questions. All these questions, we have already prepared all these questions in this session, either as a recorded class or as a live question. Can I have some confirmation on that? Is this correct? Are we done with all these questions? Is, can, we, can I have confirmation? Are we done with these questions? So considering the fact we are done with these questions, A, either as a recorded class, B, as a live class, I think we need to come up with a question which should be a new question. And that is why I'm going for Magpie. Okay. Okay. So I've got this habit of reading the introduction first, followed by the exam requirement, and then I go on to the detail. So to what is today's day? It is always going to be what? First July. Sorry. First July 20X5. Who are you? Well, you are and you are audit supervisor. And you are going to be pretty soon audit manager when it comes to AAA. So you are the audit supervisor at Pro and Company. And what are you up to? You are finalizing the planning for your new client. Wow. New client. Wow. Two marks are in my pocket. New client means as an audit firm, we will lack accumulated knowledge and experience and we will lack the information regarding the audit line. We'll be so unfamiliar with the opening balances because those were audited by someone else or maybe not audited at all. So that creates a situation where as an auditor, I might not be able to detect the material misstatement in the financial statement. Why? Because I lack the accumulated knowledge and experience and it's called detection risk. So you can score one mark by highlighting the fact Considering the fact that Magpie is a new audit client, the audit firm would lack the accumulated knowledge and experience. There will be concerns regarding the integrity of the opening balances as well. So this creates detection risk. An auditor might not be able to detect the material misstatement. One mark. What should be the response? Well, we need to devote more time on planning. We need to devote more resources on assessing the risk. We need to devote the most suitably trained and experienced staff over this new audit client called Magpie. Is this clear? Another one mark. We are done with two marks. Guys, is there anyone who has created notes on all the detection risks along with the responses? Because this is something I asked for during the session. Is there anyone who could confirm me? Is there anyone who prepared all the notes Relevant to detection risk, there are four to five examples of detection risk. Make your message a direct message. So Nomi is saying, Sayyid Numan is saying that yes, he has. Hamad is saying, yes, sir. Numan, your message is a direct message. So Hamad, you have to share those notes as well. How many examples? How many examples are there in detection risk? Hamad, new client. Maybe your audit client has outsourced their payroll. Maybe they have outsourced their receivable collection. Maybe your client is using some third party warehouse. Maybe there is a tight reporting deadline or a time pressure. That's it. I think four to five examples. That's it. Yes, payroll outsourcing. Okay. Backby Company is a retailer of garden supplies which operates from 20 stores across the country and employs 200 staff. The audit manager 
has attended a meeting with the finance director and has provided you with the following notes of that meeting and the financial statement extract. Now, I'm not going to read all this portion. Rather, I want to explore the exam requirements first. What about part A? Part A is a straightforward bookish knowledge, which we discussed approximately 20 minutes ago. What about part B? Using the table below, calculate the following two ratios for both years to assist you in planning the audit of Magpie. So you need to calculate operating profit margin for the last year and for this year. You need to calculate the payable payment period for last year and for this year. And if it is possible, if it is possible for you to calculate more ratios, do it. But you know what? Certain ratios have already been there. For example, you are not supposed to calculate the receivable collection period because the receivable collection period is already there and it has gone up by a huge margin. Inventory holding period has gone up by a huge margin. So if the inventory holding period has gone up, if the payable payment period have gone up, if the current ratio and quick ratio have gone down, this could indicate that the client is struggling with the cash flow problems. Similarly, if you need to calculate operating profit margin, and if the gross profit margin is already there, well, there is an increase in gross profit margin. What if there is a decrease in operating profit margin? Well, if there is an increase in gross profit margin, and if there is a decrease in operating profit margin, that's a contradiction. That's not being consistent. So there is a possibility that the expenses are wrongly classified. Maybe some of the items have been wrongly charged as an operating expense rather than, rather than being charged as a cost of sale. Is this clear? So let's move to the part C. Are we done with part A and B? Can you calculate operating profit margin and payable payment period on your own? Please, cal can you calculate operating profit margin and payables? Payables divided by cost of sale, payables divided by cost of sale. Can you calculate all those on your own? Okay, thank you. Yes, Hamza, you are right. And Tanish, you are right. For your respective answers. We are done with part A and B. And we are only left with part C now. That's it. Hold on. Using the information provided, seven audit risks. If you are going to review the past paper solution, the examiner answer, the suggested answer, minimum nine or most probably 10 audit risks along with 10 responses would be available. So Tanish, as a student, I must prepare all of them. But if I am attempting a mock exam under strict exam conditions, maybe on 19, maybe on 18, or the WIPI's final mock exam on 21st, or the ACC's final exam on Thursday, 7th March, do not attempt over and above 7. If the examiner has asked for 7, do not attempt the 8th one. You should ensure you complete your paper. Do not write, do not overwrite. Do not, you know, write the eight point. Finish off the entire paper. Once you are done with the 100 mark paper, well, if you are still left with 15 minutes, well, maybe, maybe someone who's sitting next to you would like to have a discussion on corruption. Maybe someone around you wants to have discussion on pseudo-democracy. Maybe someone around you wants to have discussion over the over the characteristics or attributes of a true leader. Now, if he or she does not have any argument, well, in that case, instead of getting bored and instead of getting bored out of death, you know, you might want to attempt the eighth point or the ninth point. Otherwise, I really don't think so that you need to attempt anything over and above the, you know, numbers required. Okay, so try to stick with the numbers. Instead of writing the eight point, think about your seven points. Make sure you are thinking. Make sure your thinking process is there. Okay, let's continue with the question. 
During the year, the company spent 0.75 million on refurbishing its stores to improve the customer experience. All of this expenditure has been recognized in the statement of financial position as property, plant, and equipment. I'm done. I'm done. There is a risk that certain items out of the 0.75 million does not meet the capitalization criteria. There is a risk that I'm being skeptic. There is a risk that certain items should have been charged as an expense because they do not meet the criteria. Maybe they are revenue expenditures. Maybe they are not capital expenditures. So as a result of that, the non-current asset at the year end could be overstated and the profit could be overstated as well. What should be my auditor's response? What should I do as an auditor? Well, I need to have discussion with the management regarding the 0.75 million. I need to obtain the supporting documentation regarding the same and I need to make sure that 0.75 million and every bit of it actually meets the capitalization criteria to be recognized as a non-current asset. Is this clear? Can I have your participation? Can I have yes on that? Yes, I need to get the breakdown of the 0.75 million from the management along with the supporting documentation. And I have to ascertain that they actually make, they actually meet the criteria of a capital expenditure rather than revenue expenditure. Okay, thank you very much for your confirmation because it gives me the energy to continue. Okay, thank you, Sian. Janvi, thank you. Tanish, thank you. Thank you, Noman. Well done. Well, if you want to explain a bit of IS-16, well, you can. That if it actually meets the capitalization criteria in accordance with IS-16, only then it has to be capitalized. Otherwise, you do, you're not supposed to go into the details at the moment. Okay, let's continue with the question. Okay, thank you, Fatma. Okay, great. In addition, so... How many risks we, how many, we need seven risks, right? The first risk was new audit client. The second risk, the second risk could be the payable payment period. Okay, forget about the ratios at the moment. We'll discuss the ratios at the end. So, so far we are done with two risks. The first, new audit client detection risk. The second, there is a risk that the 0.75 million has been wrongly capitalized as a non-current asset. Okay, we are done with two. Forget about the ratios at the moment. In addition, the company also installed a new sales system during the year, which records all sales and receivables. The system enables daily sales from each store to be automatically reported to the centralized finance department at the end of each working day. As the system is from a market leading provider, it was not felt necessary to run the old and the new system in parallel. Oh, oh, oh. There is a risk that when the data was transferred from one system to the other, the whole process and the whole mechanism was not very well controlled. And as a result of that, the balances, the closing balances of the old balances were not correctly transferred into the new system. And as a result of that, the sales and the receivable figures at the year end could have material misstatements because of the fact that there is a risk that the data was not correctly transferred. Yes, Dhanvi, you are absolutely right. Noman, you are absolutely right. Kavish, you are absolutely right. So the, the process of data transfer does not seem to be very well controlled. Why? Because they didn't perform any tests. They did not run the two systems in parallel just to make sure the system is top notch without any flaw. What if there are flaws? What if the, the process of data transfer was not accurate? So we've got third risk. Let's continue. Customers are able to pay for their goods using either cash or credit card. At the end of the working day, the store manager generates a report from each cash register, which confirms the cash taking. The cash is then counted and compared to the report. Since the new sales system was installed, head office now receives daily cash taking reports, which have shown an increasing number of cash shortages at each store. These differences have not been investigated or reconciled on the basis that they have only been small amounts. What if those are small amounts 
individually what if the aggregate is a huge or a material amount so there could be material misstatements in aggregate and clearly the control system is not operating effectively when the control system is not operating effectively when the controls are poor we call it that the control risk is higher when the control risk is higher the risk of deal misstatement is also higher so there is a risk that that the cash which is reported at the year end or cash which is held at the year end is materially misstated okay fine if those misstatements are not material in individually those could be material in aggregate what should be the response in relation to the data transfer well because they didn't run the two systems parallel what you can do is you can reconcile the closing balances of the old system with the new system just to make sure that the balances were correctly transferred or for that matter you need to apply more substantive testing at the year end on the receivable and sale balances because there is a risk of material misstatement in the same is this clear to where yes we need to increase the testing over the cash balance we need to realize that the control system is not operating effectively and as a result of that we need to we need to enhance the professional skepticism then is you are absolutely right customers okay the company has a number of corporate customers who buy goods on a 90 day credit terms and the level of receivables which are overdue for payment has increased from prior year however the finance director has said she does not intend to make any further allowance for receivables as overdue payments are becoming common in the industry is there any audit risk over here which financial statement item we are referring over here anyone which financial statement item items are at risk overstatement of trade receivables and understatement of allowance for the doubtful debt moreover i will also utilize the information available in the question the receivable days have gone up insanely to 149 days there is a risk that some of the receivables are not recoverable anymore and as a result of that year end receivables could be overstated what should be the response well i need to review the age receivable analysis i want to have discussion with the director why they are not writing off maybe i want to review the post year end bank statement and cash day book in order to confirm that the receivable balance have now actually been converted into cash is this clear we will utilize the ratios wherever it is possible the payable ledger clerk has carried out supply statement reconciliations during the year and in number of instances the supply statement have shown a balance owing by the company which is higher than the balance on the list of individual supplier balance so according to the company we have to according to the company we have to pay a less amount to the supplier but according to the supplier according to the supplier the company has to pay a lot more so there is a difference what does that mean the year end payables and the cost of sale the purchases could be understated these differences have been included as reconciling items on the supplier statement reconciliation by the payable ledger clerk but no further work has been performed on these differences so there is a risk that that the payables at the year end could be understated so as the cost of sale so as the purchases because there is the the individual the individual supplier balances and the supplier statements are not in reconciliation with each other what should be my response well we need to come up with detail or more detail testing over the supplier balances maybe we want to confirm the supplier balances through direct confirmation with the suppliers maybe we need to apply other procedures just to confirm that what is the exact supplier balance yes we need to increase testing over the payable balance especially focusing on the completeness because apparently the payable balance is not complete yes we need to review the correspondence between those suppliers and the client maybe we'll be able to figure it out that the that the that the client record is not correct 
it has been discovered that soil relating to a batch of plant with a cost price of 0.1 million is contaminated, meaning that the plants may not be able to sold. Tests are currently being carried out to determine whether the contamination can be remedied. What item comes in your mind? IAS2. Inventory should be valued at lower of cost or NRV. If the batch is contaminated, there is a risk that, that the NRV could be well below the cost. And if the inventory is not going to be written off by the client, the year end inventory could be overstated. What should be the response? Well, I need to have discussion with the management regarding the possibility of that contamination being removed. Moreover, I need to discuss the potential NRV, or maybe I would like to evaluate the post year end invoices so that I could confirm that the NRV was over and above the cost. Otherwise, the inventory needs to be written off. The report to management issued following the 20X5 audit include a significant number of deficiencies in the payroll cycle of the business. Guys, if a company's payroll system is poor, if there are significant deficiencies in the payroll, it means the control risk is high. Once the control risk is high, it means the risk of material misstatement is high. Is high. So the year-end payable, the year-end payable balances could be misstated because there are deficiencies, there could be fictitious employees, there could be, you know, there could be incorrect wage rate. As a result of that, the payroll expense could be materially misstated. Is there any other risk which we could create? Yes. If the gross profit margin has gone up and if the operating profit margin has gone down, there is a risk of incorrect classification of expenses. If the payable payment period have gone up, if the receivable days have gone up and if the current ratio and quick ratio have gone down, there is a huge possibility that the company is struggling with the cash flow problem and those cash flow problems could be creating an uncertainty regarding the going concern. And that uncertainty regarding the going concern must be disclosed by the client. And if they are not going to do so, that means a material misstatement in the financial statement. Yes, the operating profit margin has gone down by a huge margin. Although the gross profit margin has gone up, the payable payment days, well, the payment payment payable payment days have gone down. So you are not supposed to create the liquidity and cash flow and going to the point because the payable payment have gone down. Learn this. Learn this thing. If the payable payment period have gone up, so you are struggling to pay. If not the case in this question, if the receivable days have gone up. So you are struggling to get your cash. And if the current and quick ratio have gone down, then we create the risk of, you know, cash flow problems leading towards the going concern uncertainty. So forget it. Forget it in this question. New client. Yes, we had a discussion on that. So yes, this was the first risk. New client. Don't create this heading in your exam. Yes, the property plant equipment 0.75 million. There is a possibility that that refurbishment expenditure could have certain portions which are which should not be recognized as a capital expenditure. Rather, these are revenue expenditure, and they should have been charged as a pro in, in the profit and loss account. Maybe they have been incorrectly recognized within the I-16 property plan equipment, not in line with I-16. So that's the number two. Yes, you guys identified that new sales system. The opening balances from the old system may not have been transferred correctly. That's the professional skepticism. That's, that's where you explain your risk. And maybe the new system has got certain bugs or certain issues. So as a result of that, receivable sales could be misstated. That's the number third. Well done to everyone. What's the number four? All those misstatements in relation to the cash. Well, okay, fine. Those are not material individually, but those could be material in aggregate. And moreover, that's a very important control deficiency, which makes me realize that the control risk is on the higher side. So that's the fourth risk. Receivables could be overstated primarily because of the fact that the receivable days have gone by, or well, receivable days have gone up. So that's your number 
So this cash was number four, and this receivable, the easier one, that's your number five. Supplier statement reconciliation, and there are unreconciled balances. Maybe, as Tanish was referring, maybe the payables are not complete. Moreover, the payable days have gone down. That's a very new and important point. So, if, according to my client, the payables are 5 million, 10 million, 15 million. But according to the supplier statement, the payable balance are not 5, 7 million, not 10, 12 million, not 15, 17 million. So, there is a risk that, that the client year end payables are understated because they are not complete. Once the payables are understated, automatically the payable days would be reduced. What is the formula for payable collection period? The year end payable divided by credit purchases. Or if credit purchases are not there, cost of sale. So there is a possibility that the year end payables are understated. What about payables? Oh, yes. They have gone down significantly from 3.2 to 1.9. So this could be a reason that the payable days have gone down. And along with that, there is the risk that, that the payables are understated. They are not complete at the year end. So this is the sixth. This is the sixth risk we have identified. A very important one. What about seven? Inventory at the year end could be overstated. Moreover, the inventory days have gone up as well. Last year's management report highlighted a number of deficiencies in the company's payroll cycle. So that's your eight. Profit margin, classification. Maybe the expenses have been incorrectly charged as an operating expenses. So that's your number nine. That's your number nine. Now, I want to know something from you. Please, everyone has to participate. Out of these nine, which one were old and which were new? What about new client? Use the chat box now. New client, old or new? You have to write O for old. Just write O. Or for new, write N. New client, old or new? Okay. So that's old. In there is a risk that the capital expenditure has been wrongly well, revenue expenditure has been wrongly classified as capital expenditure, old or new. Okay, the second one is also old. So the company has introduced a new system, maybe a system which is directly linked with the company's website, maybe a system which is directly linked with the company's sales or receivable. There is a possibility that the data, when once transferred from the old to the new system, was not transferred correctly. Old or new? Yes, this is old. Cash shortages. There is an indication regarding the cash shortages. Those are not material individually, but could be material in aggregate. Is it old or new? I guess it's a new one. I guess it's a new one. I don't think so. This is an old. This cash shortage story, I think it's a new one. What about receivables? The year end receivables could be overstated. The receivable days have gone up. Surely old. Surely old. What about inventory valuation? The year end inventory could be. The year end inventory could be overstated. Surely old. It's a very, very, very repetitive point. It is surely old. What about operating profit and gross profit margin? The possibility of misclassification of expenses. Surely old. Okay. What about prior year management report? The prior year management report indicated that there are deficiencies in the control in the payroll system. Well, that's a new. It's very easy, but it's new. Now, what about supplier statement reconciliation? Guys, what about supplier statement reconciliation? So those who have actually covered my lectures form 
poorly appliances to you know blackberry to venus to puny to castle courier those who have already attended all those lectures this is also old so guys how many risk you need to identify seven how many are available in the solution only seven were required how many are available in the solution 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 out of nine, seven are old who's going to fail the paper who's going to fail the paper you will fail the paper if you are not going to prepare each and every topic from three different perspective if you are realizing that out of nine audit risk seven are old well why would you fail the paper then you will fail you will fail the paper if you are not going to prepare each and every topic from three different angles if you are not going to give respect to the files called straight forward bookish knowledge file which you need to create for yourself otherwise i will share it in the group you need to focus on the section a from the acca study hub you need to focus on the section a uh from the kit you need to focus on the mock exam if you are not going to attend the mock exam even with all that hard work who might not be able to cross the line so guys Well, well, which group you need to join? Well, first of all, you can join a free WhatsApp group, and the link of that free WhatsApp group is available in the chat box. Otherwise, you are more than welcome to join with the double A and triple A revision batch for the March twenty twenty four. And with, if you are going to join the revision batch, the crash batch, you are automatically eligible. for the final mock exam as well your mock exam will be marked with equal energy and honesty just like other students so this is it from my side i hope i have played a positive role in your exam preparation i hope i have played some positive role in making you realize you still have got time to do it but tomorrow never comes do not eat tonight without preparing this question and from tomorrow you got to work on your straight forward bookish knowledge you got to work on your section a i hope you are feeling a lot more confident with respect to audit risk mind you max pi is a very 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 difficult question as compared to s t corley hart scarlett harlem so i hope you are motivated and i hope you truly believe that you will and you can shine like a bright star on thursday 7th march 2024 so for now if you have got any questions well you are more than welcome otherwise otherwise i need to take your leave why because i will be back tomorrow with the second major topic just like today just like audit risk tomorrow will be covering systems and controls okay please will you share the file you spoke yes i will sir kindly share the bookish knowledge file yes i will sir there is not any folder or file of bookish knowledge uh, well i will share that i will share this this important file called which i have created recently it's called i have called it with these the double m master plan yes i will share these top 20 questions you don't have to worry have patience i will share everything thank you so much for your time it was an exceptional session amza junaid and you are most welcome you know i'm done with the throat got a very bad throat and i'm i'm very much worried because tomorrow i've got a double a session and the saturday and sunday 
This is the most important weekend of this quarter. The most important weekend because coming Saturday and Sunday, I've got triple A webinar. Okay, can you please repeat the cash shortage point? According to the client, there are differences with respect to cash reconciliation. But those because but those differences are immaterial individually, so forget about it. But as an auditor, my mind, my skeptic mind is saying, what if those differences, what if those errors, what if those shortages are material in aggregate? So the year and cash balance could be materially misstated. Thank you for your motivation. It's my first attempt of the valet. Absolutely, yes, Mark. What is tomorrow's topic? Well, tomorrow I'll be discussing internal control systems and I will try to focus on the section A question as well from the ACCS study hub. Hey, Chris, we need you till exam. Yes, thank you very much. Hope that you will recover soon. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, guys, I think, well, there are two days for the public at large. The third day is always available to the crash batch students. So, this with these double A game changer free webinars are available for free for two days. The third day regarding the substantive procedures, the section A questions, and more importantly, the mock exam is only available to those who are part of the WIFI batch. So if you want to enroll with WIFI, well, you've got to contact them and this is their admission department's number. So you've got to contact them through the WhatsApp, te WhatsApp text. And if you've got any other concerns, you are more than welcome to contact me again through the WhatsApp text. Thank you very much, guys. Have a lovely day tomorrow. Before you join me tomorrow for the class, make sure <coughs> make sure you have actually prepared this question called magpie for at least two times you got to type the answer two times maybe once tonight maybe once tomorrow before my class thank you very much bye bye